Welcome into the Experience Comcast. I'm your host, Bridget Buis, and today I'm joined by my friend, Kelly Lassiter. So welcome in, Kelly. Thank you, Bridget. It's good to be with you this morning. It's so exciting to have you here today. Now, Kelly is a licensed professional counselor at UAB. She's also working on building her own practice at Lakeside Counseling. And I have to admit, Kelly, from one of the first times that I met you, because we actually know each other, we work together um, teaching exercise classes at our local civic center. And I could tell she was a wealth of knowledge from the first time I met her. So super excited to have her on today. So Kelly, tell us a little bit more about your background, just how you got into counseling and doing what you're doing today. Okay. Well, again, it, it is great to be with you today, Bridget, and have this opportunity. So essentially, I was working in nonprofit for many, many years. Uh, and during that time, um, had an opportunity to go back to Jacksonville State University uh, and work on uh, my master's degree. And so I was considering like, what, what do I want to do? What do I want, you know, the next part of my career to look like and what are my strengths? Um, yeah. What are the things that I feel like would really compliment me as well as, uh, you know, my, the program that I was going into. Yeah. And so I selected counseling. I just seemed like, like a really good fit. So I went back to school when I was around 38, 39 years old, uh, got that master's degree and here I am. Awesome. I love it. And it, you know, I love that part because it seems like no matter how much I know someone, there's always something about their background that I didn't know and that I learned. So well, I, love that. <laughs> I, know, learned right? today, you? I love it. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> and I really love how you talked about looking at your strengths. Cause sometimes we don't really do that. It's like, we're almost taught to not look at our strengths and focus more on our weaknesses or, or things like that, but we do all have strengths. And that's, that's really awesome that that is, what kind of led you into this profession, which is a great way to look at, you know, career paths and what you want to do. So I love that. That's oh, awesome. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, I am sure in your role as a counselor, you see a lot of people dealing with a lot of different stressors. So tell us a little bit about how you see that come out, maybe some different areas of stress that maybe we wouldn't even really think of. Just tell us a little bit about how you encounter that and what you do. Well, I see that each and every day, of course. <laughs> uh, so I work at University of Alabama at Birmingham, like you said, uh, and I work with students. So my population that I'm working with is anywhere from 18 to 25 years old on average. Uh, students that are in higher professional programs would right. be a, a little bit older, uh, but traditionally that's the that's the population that that I'm serving. Uh, so yeah, I see stress. Uh, anything from um, adjustment type of stress, you know, that fall semester is about to begin, and we've got incoming freshmen that this is their first time to be away oh, wow. from home, and so we're just you know here to support them and help them acclimate. Um, testing type of stress but you know also just some of the things i think that that we all at some point have experienced you know relationship stress financial stress uh stress associated with um you know the the climate and the time that we live in yes, um yes. so there there also may be stress with family um and you know there may be stress that that's associated with um you know, with other things uh, that you know, I, mean, I haven't even even mentioned today, and um, you know, typically um, at the core of that is you know a lot of guilt and shame that's that's really driving and making it even worse. Worrying about the future and you know what's what's yet to come. Our brain has a way of creating stories for us uh, that just ramps things up, and uh, so that yeah, I think that's what I see the most of in, in what I do. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit more because I know you are a counselor. So I know you, you're you seeing people, but you also teach others and kind of oversee counselors, right? So, I mean, you, you kind of get two sides of this coin. So tell us a little bit about that, of how not only do you see that aspect of clients coming in and helping them deal with stress, but then on the other side of helping other people help people to deal with stress and things. Yeah, that's a challenging one because uh, <laughs> I have to seek that kind of consultation myself. But yeah, um, so as part of my role uh, as a licensed professional counselor, I'm also 
uh, a supervisor. So what that means is uh, new professionals, young professionals um, who are working towards licensure have to go through a process, right? And they have to be under someone that's had a number of years of experience and training uh, to be able to um, to get to that place. They have to have like 3,000 hours and so much of that is is supervision and just their own clinical experience. So, uh, so that's where I come in. Um, and uh, yeah, I think your question is asking like, what do I see in that? And yeah. I'll be honest with you right out of the gate. And this is something that I failed to mention. And again, something that we've all, we're all familiar with is imposter syndrome, right? Yes. So, so imposter syndrome being like, oh my goodness, you know, um, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm making mistakes. Um, maybe I shouldn't be in this profession. Everybody around me knows what they're doing. Uh, so it just, it builds and builds and builds. And so, you know, for me, it's normalizing that, right? Like, hey, you know, this is this is part of being a new professional in any arena, right? Yeah. So what you experience is, this is, this is normal. Uh, and this is part of your growth, um, growth process. And here's a really great opportunity for growth for you, right? Yeah. So, you know, really just being encouraging and helping them work work through that, uh, talking about how can you manage it when it shows up in the counseling setting, because we can't do that. Like we gotta be very mindful <laughs> right. of ourselves. Right. Yeah, right. We have a we have a saying and it's uh counselor know thyself. Uh so <laughs> yes. we, you know just just being aware of, you know, I feel like and there are days that I still feel like an imposter. I'm like, I don't what am I doing? Um and that's okay. Uh, certainly that's okay. So that's what I see with, with young professionals. Wow. I love that. I think that is so applicable today. I love the age range that you work with too. There's that, that young, um, professional, you know, college age. I mean, it, it's such a, I think it's such a fascinating time where people are really grappling with who they are, who they're going to be. They're kind of stepping out on their own. So there's, there's a lot of things. And, and we often, I think, talk about teenage years and and yes that's the transitional years too but we we often don't really think and talk as much about that college time period and just that transition that happens then of really becoming yourself and who and, and really kind of knowing who you are and what what kind of person you're going to step into on your own and yeah I can see that imposter syndrome is huge and like you said even in my role I still feel like that sometimes I'm like I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, you know, I think we all have that regardless of our experience, our age. Um, so yes, I do think that is something that transcends. Do you feel like, cause I know you've, you've have some experience in this area with counseling. Do you feel like the imposter syndrome or, or maybe there's anything that you've seen has really become more prevalent in um, the past few years, maybe the past five, 10 years or so. Do you feel like that's the case or do you feel like we just talk about it more? Tell us a little bit about kind of what you're seeing. Yeah, um, I would say certainly. Um, and, you know, that's that and it's applicable to many different things uh, that that people are dealing with and with their own stressors and um uh, and and things that affect mental health, right? Yeah. So certainly. Uh and and you know, you the question, you know, often comes up like, um, you know, is is this something that um uh that is that is really affecting a person like their ability to not only navigate like for me, an academic setting, but you know, just all aspects of their life. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, it is. I see it in our spin class. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I, I I was there. I'm there just about every Saturday when I get up on that bike to teach people <laughs> how to do this. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. Um, and people are going to figure me out uh, that I really don't know what I'm doing. No, I, I, I try. You know. <laughs> but you know, you, you see that kind of play out and 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 how that you know affects that person's ability to uh, to really move forward with their goals to be healthier and. Uh, uh, have reduced stress or um, just improved overall mood. So, so yeah, I've yeah. seen definitely seen a, an increase, and I think we're talking about it more too. Like, look at us. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. We probably wouldn't have seen this ten or fifteen years ago. So we, you know, right. a lot of stigma associated with this, these things. Um, 
I mean, that's kind of dropping off. Uh, mm -hmm. And so that's a good thing. Uh, yeah. While it's increased, it, it's important that we're having these these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like maybe this is just my own personal opinion or some things that I've observed. I feel like there's been a little bit of a shift in perspective, maybe, of what the expert is. Like I know growing up, it seems like there was the expert and they were supposed to know it all and you were to trust them. And now there's been this shift of being more real, honestly, because while we do have some experts and things, they still don't know it all. You know, you can, you can know a lot and be an expert in an area, but you're still not going to know everything. And I think it's just that mindset of, I don't really have to know it all to, to lead someone, you know, just being a little bit further down the road than them and bringing them along is really, I think a, a healthier place to be because that keeps me, instead of thinking I'm the expert and I know it all, it keeps me humble, but it also keeps me willing to learn of like, I'm still mm -hmm. on this journey too. And I'm still learning. And I just want to share because I'm just a few steps further than you. I just want to help you get to where I am. And then as I learn more, I'll share more. Um, so I don't know if that's been um, your experience or something you've seen, but it, I think it, it definitely has been something I've seen in the, in the health spaces that I'm in of just a little bit of change in perspective of that. Oh, uh, yeah, I, again, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, as you were saying that, Bridget, I was thinking about like how, how we meet people where they are. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can, like, you can have all of the knowledge in the world and that's important. Like in my role is, it's very important that I, that I know theory and that, you right. know, I have a, uh, I have a foundation to build from that's evidence-based and all of that. Absolutely. But if you don't have like a connection to the human experience, mm. right? Like just that, let's break it down. Let's be real. Let's meet each other where we are. You're yes. going to miss something real important. If I just get up in that spin class and all I'm doing is teaching technique, but I'm not connecting with the people in that class and recognizing vulnerabilities and, you know, like encouraging them and kind of coaching them through that, I'm, I'm doing a disservice, yes. right? Uh, so yeah, I agree. Expert is one thing, but you have got to have, you have got to have that human connection. You've got to yes. have, you've got to have empathy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Empathy is, it's amazing. And it, it really changes the whole dynamic of the relationship. So oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No yeah. Now, one thing that you mentioned that I also wanted to ask about, you mentioned with people coming in, I think whether it's imposter syndrome or, uh, you know, whatever stressors they are dealing with, just their, how that affects their mental health. Um, but how I feel like their past maybe um, upbringing, things that they've experienced, um, that also plays a role, I'm sure, into the stress level that they have and the way they manage stress. So can you talk a little bit about that and how you've seen just those kind of things impact stress? Oh, yeah. Uh, our, our past has a profound impact. Um, our, our, lived, our lived journeys um, you know, starting from day zero, um, and in the formative years and in those, you know, awkward middle school years, <laughs> right. and, um, you know, for, for me, I do see a lot of trauma, mm -hmm. uh, past trauma, uh, whether that started in, in childhood, whether it was something that happened, uh, you know, in middle school, high school, maybe it happened, you know, for, um, the the student who's in the professional program may have happened uh, while they were in their undergraduate programs at, at any mm -hmm. given point. Um, so we, you know, we really practice a trauma-informed care. Like I go into mm -hmm. it and we all do without assumption that this person's past uh, uh, played zero role mm -hmm. in kind of what's going on right now. There is always a connection. I don't think I have yet to encounter a person that after we start to peel back the layers, there's not something that occurred or didn't occur, mm. right? What I yes. mean by that is they didn't get certain needs met at very important milestones in their life. And so their ability to communicate and attach with other people mm. is, is affected and to really 
like love and care for themselves because you know that that kind of compassion and care was not was not given to them at at some of those critical points in their their life yeah so I I, I do I go into it with the idea that, that everybody's got a story yes right? and and sometimes um you know the most painful events that we have can serve as um it can serve as kind of a a place to start from to to grow and to heal like what what do we need to what do we need to work on that really shows up in your life today mm -hmm. um what have you learned about yourself and your own resilience as a result of that because you're here like you are in a college setting and you're making great grades you're going into medical school even with your live story something wow. about you and something about your own resilience how can we harness that now that's a result of something really horrific that that happened to you yet you have managed to be where you are now so it really is you know we we do work on that um while also being mindful of what we need to do when there is a trauma response yeah. um and how to manage those moments because that's going to happen inevitably you know? <laughs> right yeah that there's going to be some sort of trauma so we need to work on some skills and things around that uh as this person continues to grow mm. uh and understand themselves like you said like this these are strange years <laughs> uh, brains are still developing and right. you know we're we're we're, our, we're coming into our own like worldview and, and whatever that uh looks like it's confusing you know and and to add in that just again those those past experiences yeah and I love, it's so beautiful how you put that of just really affirming in those students how, yes, you have a story um, and as horrific as it might be, you are still here and that resilience and, and just harnessing that. I love that. That's, that is absolutely beautiful. So let's shift a little bit because you, you know, we do all have that story and have been through some things. And it doesn't have to be a hopeless thing. Like you said, you know, we, we are, we are resilient people. Some of us need a little more help in, in support. I feel like we all need some support through things for sure. Um, but, you know, coming through those things and, and even if it, they're, if they're in our past and we're still trying to kind of navigate and deal with those, what are some of the things that you maybe help your students, help your clients learn how to do? Um, to help manage that and to help navigate through those things. So share what some tips and tricks that you have that um, can help us out in that. Let me see what I can pull out of my sleeve. <laughs> right, right. And uh -huh. I know it's not an overnight thing by any means, but just some of the things that just to start getting us, you know, a, a groundwork and a foundation of these are some of the things um, that are helpful. Okay. So, uh, you know, initially, you know, when, when a person comes to see us, um, you know, it's, it's first, we got to figure out like what's going on. How is it showing up in your life? And then we work jointly myself and my client to come up with a plan to address their specific needs. Mm -hmm. um, usually I will start out uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is really my, my theory of choice. It's not the only one that I practice, but it's the one I have the most experience with. Mm -hmm. Uh and journaling is probably one of the most widely cited uh, techniques yep. uh, and effective techniques uh, to yep. be able to get to explore how our thoughts and our feelings are really serving to keep us stuck in the past or to fall forward in the future. And, you know, to really be able to break those thoughts down and and those feelings down. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so journaling is something that, that I typically encourage, I'm not going to tell anybody to do, but I'm going to encourage my students to do like, this yeah. is a way, this is a great way to dump it. Like just get it out when, when you're yes. not sure. Um, depending on the situation, if a person is like having panic attacks or there is their anxiety is such that they're not able to, to say in a class or, you know, go out and have fun with friends. We might work on some grounding techniques just to really get them present in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, using some mindfulness, uh, like some some deep breathing kind of exercises, things like yeah. that. We may go into some meditation type of techniques. So 
visualization while we're incorporating relaxation uh definitely putting some some affirmations some positive affirmation in there yes. and i think the the number one thing I, if you ask my students <laughs> It's like, what's the number one thing that Kelly's going to say uh, to you that is non-negotiable? Uh, and that is self-compassion. Uh, uh, yes. Dr. Krista Neff, uh, just such an incredible um, researcher, um, professional provider, speaker, is the all-knowing authority on all things self-compassion. And so that's the one thing I'm like, you know what? You can come in here and you will receive kindness and care. That's, you know, just who I am. Uh, and you probably get that from other people. You got to extend that back to yourself, right? Yeah. Because uh, typically, you know, people are the hardest. We all are, I guess, on ourselves. And we wouldn't do that to our best friend. So that is a huge piece. Of, yeah, my students would say, yeah, she's talking about self compassion <laughs> She stays on me about being kind to myself and doing nothing. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. And, and even in that first step of um, just kind of acknowledging what has happened or what's going on, I think even in that, we have to have self compassion of just realizing if someone else came to us, like you said, if my best friend came to me and was telling me something, I would show empathy, love, you know, just grace. But sometimes I don't want to do that to myself. It's like, how, how did I, how did I go through that? What, what, was I thinking, letting myself, you know, let that happen to me when a lot of times it, it was totally out of my control, nothing that I had to do with it. It was something that I walked through. Um, and regardless of what I did or didn't do, I was still going to walk through it. But a lot of times we don't want to acknowledge it. And even in that it's self-compassion of just being like, yes, I walked through that and it's okay. It's yeah. okay that that happened. And I'm here now and I can't change that, but I can change from here on out and I can change what I do as a response from that. And, um, and yeah, that self-compassion is huge of like, that is a part of my story, but it is not all of my story. And there's so much more that I can make of it. So yeah, that self-compassion, I love that. It is, it is huge for sure. Oh, it, it, it's imperative. It's just imperative to the process. Like we got to get you out of your own way, right? We got to get you to a point to where, you know, you are able to look at that mirror and say to yourself, like, you know what, I, I'm I'm an awesome person. Like I, uh, my inner experience is beautiful. My and I'm looking at the external me, and I'm loving me. Uh, and just all of that, that kind of stuff, but it's hard. It's it real is. hard. It's one of the hardest things that I see, that I see happen. You said something really important just now, Bridget, and, and it's so true. Um, and that is, you know, recognizing it and knowing how it's showing up, but not only that, we got to create some reasonable action steps so that you're not responding to these things in a way that um, perhaps are harmful to you. True. Uh, they're keeping you stuck. They're keeping you, you know, in that place where you just can't move forward. It's kind of like you're, you know, the wheel spinning in mud and you're just stuck and you can't get out. Right. right. Um, so you've got to put an action plan in place and it has got to be a tangible action plan that is certainly reasonable. I would also add that, you know, what we want to do is we want to unravel whatever beliefs you have about yourself. You know, you got to understand like what's going on at the core. What do you actually yeah. believe about you? Like you buy into it, you know, and like it is fused in your brain. We got to undo that. Like we got to know how that's at play because that's unhelpful. Right. Right. And, um, and certainly a barrier to being able to, um, you know, su successfully implement uh, a reasonable action plan. Yeah, absolutely. I think one thing that I've come to think of more and more is so much. So we get stuck in this either or um, mentality, uh, just this extreme mentality when sometimes it, it, it can be, and a lot of times it can be a both and like, I can acknowledge that this is in my past. And at the same time, I am making steps toward a better future. It doesn't have to be that acknowledging what happened in the past is forever going to define my future. 
or acknowledging what happened in the past is going to give me excuses to not make steps in the future. There's a way to acknowledge that. And like you said, and at the same time, make an action plan, make those steps to keep those wheels from getting stuck in the mud and be like, yes, I'm acknowledging where I've been or where I'm at. And at the same time, I'm making a plan to get out of here and to move forward. So yeah, I think that's, that is key for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's a complete, it's a complete choice that a person has. Now there may be some exterior things that are outside of their control, but there is so much that is in your control and, you know, being able uh, to live bravely and courageously you know, it takes effort. It's not easy. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, being patient with yourself and uh, knowing it's it's not going to happen overnight. We've, you've had years of, you know, creating these beliefs and things that uh, and patterns of behavior that don't serve you anymore. Right. Uh, but you're right. Um, you know, acknowledging what happened to you in the past and how that shows up is not saying what happened was OK. Right. right. It's not judging how you respond. It's saying, I accept that this thing happened. Um, I also accept that the things that I've been turning to that aren't helpful and perhaps harmful are not working for me anymore. Yes. But I'm not going to judge me for that. Like, I'm not going to criticize me for that. This is my lived experience. I, but I am choosing today to make that commitment to myself to move, to move forward. Yes, absolutely. Amazing. Ah, I love it. I love it. Um, such great information, such hopeful information, just to know that we are all in this together, not to brush it under the rug, but yes, we have uh, all experienced stress. Um, we all have a story, but there's so much hope. There is a personal aspect of, um, ownership of owning our story and making that choice to move forward. Um, but there's so much hope in it. Cause yes, you're right. It is hard. It is a daily thing, but it is so worth it to be able to take those steps forward and really make something of, um, of your life and where you're at now. And just saying like, yeah, this is, this is my story and this is what I did. It was hard work, but I've come a long way and that, you know, it really is worth it. Well, and I'm so glad that you used the word hope because that's it. You know, we're here to instill hope. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there may be people that are watching this today that they don't have any hope and mm -hmm. they, they do feel hopeless. And I just really want to encourage those people, like, lean into someone that you trust, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it's a situation where, like, you know, like, I've got to get some help, like, call 988, uh, which is a national crisis hotline. Yeah. Um, do what you need to do and what you can do to care for yourself and know that you are cared for. Yes. Uh, there is hope in everything, even when it feels like this is the darkest hour and I don't see any way out. There is always a way out. Yes. Absolutely. I don't know of a better way to wrap it up other than that little bit of hope. And just a reminder that, yes, there is always hope. There is always a way out. Surround yourself with those people. Reach out to those people who you know you can love and trust, who are safe. So thank you, Kelly, for being on the show, sharing um, definitely some hope with us and a lot of great information. I feel like I could talk for another hour um, and just dive in more. So we'll definitely have, no, to, have you back. <laughs> we'll have to have you back on at some point. Um, we love it. So tell us, uh, I know you're at UAB working on building your own practice. Is there a way that people can reach you now if they want to follow you or um, tell us kind of how to find out a little bit more about you? Okay. Well, I, of course, I have my personal page on, on okay. Facebook. At this point, I don't have the practice page up uh, simply because I'm not offering clinical services. That will be, uh, the plan is the target date by summer 2025 to begin clinical services. Okay. Um, and so, you know, at this point, if somebody has a question uh, or they're like, hey, I saw this, I saw this podcast or listened to this podcast, and I really want to know how to get connected to a therapist, uh, they're more than welcome to reach me at my Gmail address. We can put that in the show notes. I will gladly 
uh, do what I, I can to help them get connected with uh, a provider in the community. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Kelly, again, for being here. And that is it for today. Thank you all for joining us and we will see you next time. As always, make sure you subscribe so you get notified of all the new episodes and give us a like and a share. We appreciate your support. If you like what you've heard and you want more, make sure that you check out Experience Calm Coaching for more ways to experience a calm body, mind, and spirit. You can also schedule a free consult to see how coaching could support you. Just go to www.experiencecalmcoaching.com.